Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plan Obsessed. And today we're going to take a look in on the Red Wigglers. I have yet to get another bin to divide these guys out again. So we're just going to have to, uh, or they're just going to have to deal with the uh, cramped living solutions uh, until I can. Let's have a look at these guys. Got a lot of springtails in here again for some reason. Looks like I got quite a few cherry pits. Should probably pick these out and see if I can grow a cherry tree. Because, you know, that's what I need. One more tree, right? So, one of the things I wanted to say was that these Red Wigglers came from Emily the Crazy Worm Lady back in 2019. And uh, they have been clicking along, making me lovely cocoons ever since. And we have been slowly growing the herd. I think now that I've got them in a horizontal bed, I think they really are doing better. They uh, seem to be reproducing faster than they have in the past. Um, so that's... I'm, you know, glad that I found the solution to that, which sort of validates my experiment, which was horizontal um, volume versus vertical volume, you know, what works better for the worms. And of course, as anybody who's been a worm farmer for any amount of time knows that it's uh, square foot, just, you know, horizontally. That's, that has been proven, uh, at least for red wigglers. How many cherries did I put in there? Jeez. Uh, but the good thing about Red Wigglers is they're really forgiving. They're good for beginners. Um, they're good for people who have really strange environments that might need a little bit of forgiveness. Uh, like I do, you know, in the summertime my basement is probably, you know, 80, 85 degrees. And in the winter, I mean, it's 67 down here right now, which is, is a good, you know, that's pretty much what it is most of the time. Uh, until it gets super cold here in Illinois. And then in that case, um, I have found that the basement will actually go down in the 50s. It's, it's good that the Red Wigglers don't really care what the temperature is, and they just really do keep on going. They continue to function, you know, even, you know, really close to uh, freezing temperature. So it's been a month since I've looked in on these guys, and so, sorry to waste your time with me picking out cherry pits, but those are not going to dissolve any time you know, years probably. But one of the things I wanted to mention was that if you are a new, you know, worm farmer, you know, don't do what I did and go and, and get yourself some African night crawlers because they really are fussy. If you, if you flip them around like this, and I do, but they're in a zipper bag, they will freak out for like the next six hours, maybe even a whole day. Uh, the red wigglers, you know, once you quit messing with them, they'll, they'll calm right back down no problem easy peasy um, the other kinds of worms when they get disturbed you know even like in my big blue bin you know I will come down here probably you know three or four hours after I do a video um, and I will still find them crawling the walls um, and they just don't tolerate it very well um, luckily in my basement I have a dirt floor basement so if they get onto the floor then I can just pick them up and put them back in the bin. It's not like upstairs where if they go flying around then they're doomed on the hardwood floor. But so these guys don't have any food left and I'm not super surprised about that considering it's been almost a month since we've been in here. But it does look like there's uh, you know a good amount of bedding still in here. I don't even remember feeding them peanut shells. Uh, could have been one of the uh, donations from CC. So they're doing good. This bin is the one that I would like to have uh, split out, but uh, it's Black Friday and I am not leaving the house. Nope, not doing it. If you're one of those people that goes out shopping on Black Friday and waits in line, put that in the comment below. Um, I've only ever known one person that did that, um, and the rest of everybody I know is like me, and they, they hide in the house until... Uh, at the very least Monday. All right, well, these guys clearly are gonna need some food, so I'm gonna do uh, do a center feeding here. I'm not gonna give them any more bedding because you can see, you can still see paper, you can still see coconut coir in here, so I don't, and it, plus it's getting super full and I don't really have anywhere for them to go. <laughs> so I'm gonna make a little bit of a hole here and then I'm gonna grab some food. Okay, looks like bananas and, and kiwis. The, the kiwis are not cheap, and I tell you, I had an entire like 12 pack go bad, and 
they really tasted awful, um, which was disappointing because we love we love our kiwis. So we got some tea bags and bananas, big old mango uh, pit there. That should uh, definitely make them happy. And then maybe next week when I can still when I can go back to the store, then maybe I can get them another bin and we can expand the uh, the population next time. All right, let me cover these guys up and we'll get the next red wiggler bin. All right, this bin I think is the younger of the two. You can see much more paper and whatnot in here. Quite a few springtails, but the population is much lower. So I'm gonna kind of just mix this around and get all of the uh, the dry paper from on top incorporated in. Now for these bins, I do leave a lid loosely on top um, because I stack them. Um, I don't usually do that, but uh, there's another really nice cocoon there. Oh my, there's like cocoon palooza here, look at that. So they're not slowing down their breeding even though it's you know below 70 degrees Fahrenheit here. Um, which just, you know, again, is, you know, one of the reasons why I think that um, if you're going to start with worms, you should start with red wigglers. Um, you, won't, you won't have a lot of newbie problems with them. When I started, I started with, I think I got two pounds from Uncle Jim's, and it was, it turned out to be, it was supposed to be red wigglers, but it was a mix of the blue worms and the, you know, the red wigglers, and then I bought some super reds, which I think are the Euros. Um, and that's what I started with all those years ago, back in 18, and they've done fine. I know some people are irritated about getting blues and everything. They slow down this time of the year, and so that that is one of the problems. But um, as far as the red wigglers, you know, they all play nice together. It's not like they're fighting or... But the blue worms in the summertime in really hot temperatures do tend to outcompete them, outbreed them, and you do see a much higher percentage of them in the summertime. And I don't know if they die back or uh, or what the story is, but in the wintertime, you just don't see them. Uh, but with the red wigglers, they just keep on trucking. See, little tiny babies, cocoons, everything. So in my case, I started out doing, um, like back in the beginning when I started worm farming, I did it because worm castings are so expensive around where I live. If you wanted to buy a pound of, of castings, you would end up paying you know, like $2, two, five, I don't know, just for like a little bitty container, like twice the size of a deck of cards, you know, is, is two or three bucks American money. And I was like, I've got way too many trees, I can't afford that. And I go, worms, I can do worms. You know, I can definitely grow some worms to get me, you know, the fertilizer that's the safest for my bonsais. I can totally do that. So here we are, all those years later, and now I'm, I don't know, I probably have a total of maybe 100 pounds of worms in the basement here and upstairs. And then uh, the primary function now is to eat all of my boxes and all of my scraps. So it's become my primary composting form. I used to do outside composting, but uh, now I do most everything with the worms. They get every all the food. Uh, sometimes the neighbor's food, friend's food, work food. Uh, well, okay, we're using the seeds too, but we've got melon, bananas, tea bags, I think. So they're not getting fed exactly the same. A lot of times I do them kind of like they're twins, but uh, just isn't isn't in the, uh, the cards today. But if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.